going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hangout Spot, where you already know. It's Real Talk Sports Talk, live from my man cave. It's your boy, Johnny, and let's talk football, because this was the first week of the NFL playoffs, wild card weekend, and it didn't disappoint. A lot of good games, a couple of shockers. So let's go around and highlight some top performances and key takeaways, and then we will preview those games next week in the divisional round, starting with the two teams that I was most impressed with this weekend, and that was the Houston Texans and the Green Bay Packers. I can't say enough about what D'Amico Ryans has done over there in Houston, man. I mean, a rookie head coach, rookie coordinator, rookie quarterback, I don't think anybody expected them to be going into the playoffs, nonetheless going into week two, the divisional round. But here we are, and they've definitely earned that. They've earned that right to be here. And ladies and gentlemen, the way they played last week against a formidable team, they look legit. They look legit. I mean, they just blow the Cleveland Browns out of the water, man, 45 to 14. I tell you, man, I mean, if I were, if you were, if I were a Houston fan, I'd be super excited about not just this season, what you've accomplished, but what you can potentially accomplish down the road, man. I mean, because this C.J. Stroud kid is legit. He is a star in the making. And it looks like he plays his best in the biggest games because he was just as impressive as he was in that must win against the Colts. 274 yards and three touchdowns. Insane, man. Absolutely insane. But, I mean, the defense was equally impressive. I mean, they made Joe Flacco's life miserable. That good story of Joe Flacco, <laughs> it all came crashing down on Saturday, man. He was sacked four times, and he threw two consecutive pick sixes. How many times do you see that happening? Rough day at the office. Doesn't diminish what they did as a team. Kudos to Kevin Stefanski for facing all that adversity this year and overcoming that, still winning 11 games and getting into the playoffs. But, I mean, right now, <laughs> this Texans team, they're, they're for real. They're for real. Um, you know, they face the Ravens next week. That's going to be a tough matchup, and we'll talk about that one a little bit later. But the Packers, man, what about the Packers? They go into Dallas against a team that was undefeated this year at home, 8-0. A team that came into the game with the best scoring offense in the NFL. And they destroy them. They almost put up a 50 spot, 48-32. to They spanked them. They embarrassed them at home. Cowboy fans are going berserk. Social media is killing them. If you're a Dallas fan, stay off social media, man. I mean, the memes and the, and the posts. Wow, I mean, it's crazy how much hate the Cowboys get, but realistically, man, again, you know, the fans, I had some fans, some Dallas Cowboy fans that I am, that I am, you know, friends with that said that they were concerned because all that offense that they showed in the regular season, they wanted to see it in the playoffs when it mattered the most. And I mean, they did score 32 points. I don't think the game was as close as the, as the score indicates. Dak Prescott wasn't good. Yeah, he threw for 400 yards, passed the ball 60 times. He had three touchdowns, but again, those two picks that he threw, one of them being a pick six, were killers. And every time the Dallas Cowboys tried to get some momentum to get back in the game, man, the Packers just, just took off and went down the field and answered that. So I give Matt LaFleur a lot of credit, man, for what he's done this year, especially with Jordan Love, man. His first full year as a starter, his first playoff game, 272 yards and three touchdowns like he had been there for years. Again, now the Green Bay Packers will have to travel to San Francisco to face the, to face the 49ers next Saturday. I think that one's going to be a lot, a, a really good game. A lot better than a lot of people are anticipating it to be early on. By far, the, mo the most disappointing team this week, yeah, the Cowboys. 12 and 5, they win the division. The number one in scoring offense. Dak Prescott's having an MVP or was having an MVP season in the regular season. CeeDee Lamb is just an absolute beast. And they lose again in the first round. The story here is Mike McCarthy. Is he going to keep his job? I know a, Dallas, a lot of Dallas Cowboy fans want his head. Nothing's been announced formally yet. You got to see what Jerry Jones is going to do. Let's not forget Bill Belichick is out there. 
Even though I don't see him going to Dallas, rumors are that he'll probably go to Atlanta. He's already interviewed there, but again, nothing's been formally announced. The most disappointing part of Dallas wasn't the offense. It was the defense. This defense came in fifth in average points allowed, and then they almost allowed 50 in a playoff game. Unacceptable. They were horrendous. Again, kudos to the Packers. Speaking of disappointing uh, offenses, you got the Miami Dolphins, who by virtue of losing to the Buffalo Bills, lost the division, lost that seed, that higher seed, and a home playoff game. They had to travel to Kansas City this week in probably what people are calling the most coldest game in football history. People were saying it felt like it was below 30 de degrees on the field. Tough conditions, for, especially for a team you know, that plays the majority of their games in South Florida, where it's beautiful. The Dolphins looked like they didn't even want to be there because of the cold weather. That's how I saw it. Disappointing. They lose 26-7 to in a game that I picked the Chiefs to win. But the Dolphins just didn't show up. Mahomes did what he needed to do, as expected. And this is what he does when the, brights, when the lights are brightest. 262 yards and a touchdown. Pacheco took care of the groundwork. He rushed for 89 yards and a touchdown. Again, he runs like a man possessed. Felt bad for those Dolphins linebackers and safeties who had to come up and, and, and hit this guy and try to take him down. Especially in that cold weather, it probably felt like they were running into a truck. And then a great game by the rookie, man. Rookie, rookie wide receiver. I know the um, Rasheed Rice was spectacular. Eight catches for 130 yards and a touchdown. There's been a lot of talk about this receiving core. Now we got to see when the games really matter, man. This is when Patrick Mahomes is usually at his best. Kelsey pitched in with seven catches. Tua wasn't good. Only completed 51% of his passes. Disappointing. Miami choked away the division. And then they lose in the first round. Unbelievable. Kansas City now will have to travel to Buffalo next week to face the Bills in what I think is going to be probably the game of the week. Speaking of the Bills, they took care of business. Reason why they're going to host this game next week. They did what they needed to do. They beat the Steelers 31-17 to in a game where I kind of knew early on that the Steelers just weren't on the Bills level. The Bills are for real. They're going to be a problem. Josh Allen was magnificent yesterday. He really was. And this, uh, again, you know, some cold conditions. It was, you know, this game had to be moved from Sunday to Monday due to what they were saying is three feet of snow that hit Buffalo over the weekend. So it was cold. But the fans showed up. And again, Josh Allen did what he needed to do. 203 yards, three touchdowns. Again, he was even better with his legs. He rushed for 74 yards, 52 of them being on a touchdown run. 52-yard touchdown run. That just electrified the crowd. He plays like this. Next couple weeks, man. I can definitely see the Bills in the Super Bowl. The Steelers, their run comes to an end. So kudos to them. Mike Tomlin, again, you know, great run. 17 straight winning seasons. Found a way to get this team into the playoffs through a lot of adversity as well. And the story after the game was, is he going to come back for next year? I know he walked off. When a reporter asked him that during his post-game interview, but there is uh, there is word today that, that he spoke to the team and told them that he was coming back. So more than likely, you see him back on the sideline, and that is the right thing to do. He's one of the best coaches in this league. Find a way to keep him there and keep him there long term. In my opinion, the game of the week was Saturday night between the Detroit Lions and the L.A. Rams. This was a game that the Lions ended up winning by a point, 24 to 23. Again, a really, really good, well-played game between two good teams, two good head coaches. This was a game that pit the quarterbacks playing against their former teams, and they didn't disappoint. Stafford, he was great. He threw for 367 and two touchdowns in his return back to Detroit, but it wasn't enough. God, Goff, he was, he was impressive as well. He threw for 277 yards and a touchdown, but his best, his best pass, in my opinion, was the one to end the game. In typical Dan Campbell fashion, you know, instead of punting the ball back to the Rams with about a minute left, no, he played to win the game. He did not want to give them the ball back. He went for it on a fourth down, called up a passing play, and Goff hit the receiver to move the chains, which ultimately enabled them to win the game. 
So, I mean, I am just, I'm just so happy for the Detroit Lion fans. I really am. I mean, I know how it feels to root for a team that continuously doesn't give you any hope every year. I mean, this was the first playoff game that they've hosted in 30 years, and the crowd definitely came up. It was electric. They hadn't won a playoff game in 32 years. So, again, enjoy this, Lions fans. You deserve it. You have a really good team and a good shot to win next week and go into the NFC Championship game. I love Dan Campbell. I love him as a head coach. This team has taken on his identity. They're tough, they're gritty. They're gonna be a problem. They are going to host, by virtue of Dallas losing and them winning, they get a chance to host another playoff game next week. So again, expect that crowd to be even more electric. They're gonna host the Buccaneers. Because the Buccaneers actually took care, of their, took care of business in their game at home. And they destroyed the Philadelphia Eagles 32-9. Ending a disappointing and underachieving season for the Eagles. It comes to an end. Baker was phenomenal. Baker Mayfield, he threw for 337 yards and three touchdowns. He's had a really good season. And this is a guy who came into the season competing for a starting job with another quarterback. Kyle Trask, I believe, is the guy he was competing against. He won the job. And here he is going into the divisional round of the playoffs. So much respect to him. He came into the game banged up. He looked fine out there. He was throwing with confidence. Congratulations to Todd Bowles, former Jets head coach. Next week will be tough. Next week will be tough. But again, I mean, right now the Buccaneers are playing really good football. So anything is possible. As far as the Eagles... I don't know what to say if you're an Eagle fan, man. I mean, that's, there's rumors that maybe Nick Sirianni will be fired. I, I don't know if that's going to happen. The biggest thing to me here is why the, the Eagles were as bad as they were this year or, uh, or they underachieved as much as they did was because they lost their offensive and defensive coordinator and they could never recover. And because they were winning games, they had a lot of weaknesses on this team, but, but since they were winning games, they didn't do anything to address or make this team any better. And it cost them at the end. We were waiting for them to show up and be the Eagle team of last year's Super Bowl run. They never showed up. Very disappointing. <clears throat> Very disappointing. Anyway, those are our games. Those were our playoff games. Now let's get into this week's upcoming games in the divisional round. Starting with the Houston Texans. They open up. This weekend, again, they open up the divisional round. 4.30 Saturday, they're traveling to Baltimore to face the Baltimore Ravens. The Texans are coming into this game 4-4 four and four on the road. They won three out of their last four to get into the playoffs. They can score. They're 13th in average points per game. They're 11th in average uh, passing yards a game. And it's going to be interesting to see C.J. Stroud against one of the best secondaries in football, the Baltimore Ravens secondary. They are third in interceptions with a total of, of 18, and they're facing a, a quarterback that doesn't turn the ball over, doesn't throw interceptions. He only has five on the season. C.J. Stroud, by far, is, is the unquestioned rookie of the year, in my opinion. I mean, almost 65% completion, over 4,100 yards passing. If you count last, last week's three touchdowns, 26 touchdowns, only five interceptions. So, again, the key is him against this, this stingy Baltimore secondary. Player to watch for me in this game is Nico Collins, who had a fantastic year, over 1,200 yards in receiving uh, in, 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 in the air, eight touchdowns. He had a touchdown last week as well in his first ever playoff start. The Ravens, they're 13-4. and four. They come into this game 6-3 and three at home. They can score. They're fourth in average points per game. And they can stop you from scoring. They're first in average points allowed. They're only allowing a little bit over 16 points a game. Lamar Jackson, again, having an MVP caliber season. Most people think that it's his award to lose. Phenomenal season, over 3,600 yards in the air, 24 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 5 rushing touchdowns. He averages 5.5 yards on the ground. So, again, if you're not careful, he will take off. He is the ultimate dual threat, has great chemistry with Zay Flowers, the rookie wide receiver. But the players to watch in this game, to me, I think is going to be Odell Beckham Jr. He has a tendency to show up in these type of games. 
So I would keep an eye on him. And then obviously on the defensive end, you got Justin Matabuke, who led the Ravens with 13 sacks. And their safety, Geno Stone, had seven picks. So he is the ultimate ball hawk. C.J. Stroud, got to be careful. This is going to be a tough matchup for D'Amico and crew. I like him. I, I like this game for them, though. Win or lose, regardless. These are the type of games that they better get used to playing because I see the Houston Texans continuously going to be in the playoffs, especially with C.J. Stroud, a quarterback. But this is going to be a tough one. So I'm going to pick the Ravens to win this game at home. Which takes us to our 8 o'clock game on Saturday between the Green Bay Packers who are traveling to San Francisco to face the Niners. The Packers are actually 4-5 and five on the road this year. They won their last three games in the regular season to get that final wild card spot. And they took advantage of that by being the first 7th seed. I know it's only been two years, but the first 7th seed to knock off a 2 seed by destroying the Cowboys last week. The story here is Jordan Love against this ferocious Niner defense. Jordan Love has been having a spectacular season. We're going to see if he can continue to do that against you know one of the best defenses in the league coming off a week rest. Player to watch for me here is the rookie wide receiver, Romeo Dobbs. He had an excellent game last week, six catches, 151 yards, and a touchdown. We'll see if that continues. The Niners, they're 5-3 and three at home. They have two possible MVP candidates with Brock Purdy and Christian McCaffrey. Both of them stellar seasons, but let's not forget, they didn't play the last game of the week uh, of the regular season. So there's two weeks in a row. I hate when teams do that because players of their caliber has a tendency to come in a little rusty. But players to watch for me are both on the defensive side. Nick Boza being one of them. Nine playoff games. He has eight sacks. So this is when he has a tendency to turn it up a notch. Fred Warner. One of the best linebackers in the league. He had four interceptions this year, four forced fumbles. He's another player to watch. So this one will be interesting. See how Jordan Love is able to navigate, spread the ball around against this type of defense. I'm going to pick the Niners to win this game, though, because I just think that they're the complete team. They're the most complete team in the NFC. And they're just a notch better than the Packers. Which takes us to our Sunday games. Sunday, 3 o'clock, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who are traveling to Detroit to face the Detroit Lions. The Buccaneers are 5-4 and four on the road to get into the playoffs. They had to win five of the last six. Baker, like I said, phenomenal season. Over 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns. The player to watch for me in the Buccaneers is their second-year running back, Rashad White. I think they need to get him going. He had a good game, 72 yards on the ground. For the season, he was 10 yards shy of a 1,000-yard season. He has six touchdowns on the ground, two in the air. And another player that I think needs to be watched is Cade Otten. He had eight catches for 89 yards last week. And we know Mike Evans is going to garner a lot of attention. This is a guy who can sneak in there and possibly get another 9, 10 catches and a touchdown or two. As for the Lions, again, huge win. They get to do it all over again. So if, if you enjoyed the first one, Lions fans, this one will probably be even better. And, and when they play at home, they don't disappoint. With that playoff win last week, they're now 7-2 and two at home. They can score. They're fifth in average points per game, second in average uh, yard passing yards a game, and that's because Goff has had an excellent season. He can sling it. Over 4,500 yards passing, 30 touchdowns. Good thing is Laporta did play the tight end. Sam Laporta did play last week. There were questions that he may not play because of a knee injury, <clears throat> but he did play. So that's going to be key. The player to watch for me in this game is their best receiver. He's a stud. Amon Ross St. Brown. Last week, seven catches for 110 yards. For the season, though, 119 catches for over 1,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. He's a beast. They got to definitely, Todd Bowles has to definitely keep an eye on this kid wherever, he at, wherever he's at in the field. I like the Buccaneers. They're a tough team. And they're tough defensively, but... I think this Lions train is going to keep going all the way to the championship game. Well-deserved as well. I'm going to pick the Lions to win this game at home. Which takes us to our final playoff game on Sunday evening, 6.30, between two familiar foes. A game that I think will be the game of the week, in my opinion, because these two teams, when they play against each other, they don't disappoint. And they're very familiar with each other. Kansas City Chiefs are traveling to Buffalo to face the Buffalo Bills. 
And like I said, I think this is going to be a great game. This is a rematch from the game earlier this season, the 20-17 to 17 Bills win, the one that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid and all the Chiefs fans went berserk about because they complained. Why was that offsides against Kadarius Tony called at that moment in the game, so late in the game? Negated a big play. In fact, it negated a touchdown that would have put the Chiefs ahead. But instead, they call it back. It was the right call, and the Bills win the game. But again, it doesn't excuse Mahomes from looking like an absolute baby after the game, especially when, when he went and hugged it out with Josh Allen. He was frustrated, but there was no need to be. The Chiefs are the team that usually benefit from the most calls. So, the story here is will he get his revenge for losing that game? We'll see. I mean, let's not forget, man. Patrick Mahomes. This is his time. This is his time to shine. This is when he plays his best, when the lights are brightest. The Chiefs are the defending Super Bowl champions, and they do have weapons. And I know there's been a lot of talk in the season about how frustrated Mahomes has been with the wide receiving core. They dropped a lot of passes. I know that. But I don't know. They seem to have gotten it right the last couple of weeks, especially last week, in tough conditions, cold conditions. So going into Buffalo in this game is not going to be anything for them. They're used to this type of weather. The key here in this game is um, a lot of people don't talk enough about the chief defense, and they are championship caliber. They are second in average points allowed. They're only averaging, uh, they're only giving up an average of a little bit over 17 a game. They're second in sacks with 57. So it's going to be, it's going to be really, really interesting to see how that front four shapes up against Josh Allen, who's the, the quarterback that's most difficult to sack. And we saw that last week as well. If you don't get him low, you're not going to get him to the ground. He's an absolute monster. Players to watch for me in this game, Isaiah Pacheco. I think, you know, the way he runs and has the tendency to move the chains, it just ignites this offense. It electrifies them. When a guy runs like a man possessed like he does, it can lift an offense. I think another player to watch is that rookie receiver who had a great game last week, Rasheed Rice. He's had a really good year, quite a good year, his rookie season. I mean, yeah, he had the eight catches, the 130 yards last year, uh, last week, but he's had 79 catches on the season, almost 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns. Mahomes is comfortable throwing him the football. He is becoming more and more that go-to guy. Now, they do have Kelsey again. He had seven catches, 95, 93 for the season. But when teams, when teams start keying in on Kelsey, this kid can be a problem. So I'd keep an eye on that. Mahomes, I mean, what can I say about him? I mean, in the playoffs, his career, 15 games, 36 touchdowns, only seven picks. This is his time, man. But the Bills, they're, they're, they're legit dangerous, man. They really are. They're 7-2 and two at home. They can also score. They're six in average points scored per game. Their defense is legit, too. They're fourth. And average points allowed, they're only, they're only giving up an average of a little bit over 18 a game. Fourth in sacks, third in interceptions, two evenly. I mean, these teams are, 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 are matched up pretty evenly in a lot of different categories. Josh Allen, amazing season. Again, another MVP caliber season. Over 40 touchdowns, both in the air and on the ground. You saw what he's capable of doing last week on that 52-yard touchdown run. The biggest thing with Josh Allen is the turnovers, man. If he can stay away from the turnovers, just way too many. If he can stop and not be erratic, try not to hit that home run, try not to be Superman, I think they'll be fine. I think they can win this game. Run the ball with James Cook. So I would expect more carries with him. And the players that I the, the players to watch for me on the Bills are those two tight ends, those two young tight ends, who I think are very, very good. Dalton Kincaid and Dawson Knox. They had two touchdowns last week. Again, if you can run the ball with Cook, play action, these guys open in the middle, it works. Stephon Diggs, let's not forget. He's starting to cook and percolate a little bit too. This is going to be a great game. Again, I, I, I think this is, this is a game that's not going to disappoint. Since when, anyway, when does a, a Bills-Chiefs game disappoint? They're always great games that go down to the wire, especially in the playoffs. This one will be no different. 
the, the thing that does concern me about Buffalo is they're a little banged up going into this game. But again, this is the playoffs, man. I had a rough one, a hard time with this one. Because again, we're talking about the defending champs looking to get that revenge. But I don't know. I'm not going to renege now. I mean, I said weeks ago that the Bills are a dangerous team once they get in. And if they did get in, I see them in the AFC Championship game. So I'm not going to back away from that. I think that they have enough, especially with the way they looked last week, or the way Josh Allen looked last week. I think they're going to pull it out in another close classic game to close out the divisional round. And those are my picks for this weekend's divisional round playoff games. I hope they're going to be better than last week. So last week we had good games, but I think these games are going to be even better. And just like I said last week, if you're a fan that's rooting for any one of these teams that are still in it, man, enjoy it. Cherish that. And cherish the ride for as long as it lasts. Because again, <laughs> when you root 14 that doesn't get into the playoffs for 13, 14 years, man, I mean, it's tough. It's tough. So congratulations. Enjoy these games. Again, I don't think they're going to disappoint. And we'll be back at it next week talking about how the games went. And obviously the championship games that are ahead. So make sure you stay tuned to that. And as always, if you're new to watching my videos, please subscribe. And when you come back more often and hang out with your boy here in the hangout spot, lots of cool stuff coming in the next coming weeks, especially after the Super Bowl. We start getting into baseball, some NBA stuff, some good boxing cards that are popping up. And we'll start talking about that as well. So make sure you're along for the ride. But as always, I appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate your support. This is your boy Johnny signing out from the hangout spot. Enjoy those games. And I'll talk to you soon.